you guys do see? It's better. So what's up everyone? Hope we're having an awesome today. Turns out it's Tuesday and it's two o'clock. So we're live doing work. Uh, today I'm going to be doing kind of a resin finish. I had a resin finish, like a countertop finish. I had someone call me today asking about like a moody marble color to go along with his very dark blue um, cabinets in his kitchen. No. This is a call I took this morning. And so I'm going to do my best to create a finish that would look good in this man's house. He didn't, I'm, I'm not hired to do the project, but I do get called often to come up with um, color palettes, color schemes. Oh my goodness. Okay. This thing will turn off, but it was annoying me over there. So we'll be using my Better for the Environment wipes. I don't know where my big reusable bucket is, but the wipes are the same. So let's start talking about colors. Man, that cover image. I wonder if I can change that. Nope. Beautiful. Anyways. Um, the colors I'm going to be using today are Shooting Star or Milky Way, Milky Way by Resin Art. Uh, Dark and Stormy. I don't. That's doing it right here. Dark and Stormy from Color Passion. Oyster Satin from Resin Art. Silver Gray from Just Resin. Top Cell White by Color Passion. Interference Blue. And then a Floating Silver. Arguably, this is way too many colors for me to use in one piece. But we're going to roll with it. I hope you've all had an awesome day. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, if you're new here, hi, hello, what's up? I'm Erica. I'm the one in the horrible cover image, which I'll be changing as soon as I post the video. And um, we do art every day. We try to do live artwork every day. It's not always resin, but it's always a good time. And we're so excited to have you guys here. So let's get arty. So I'm only going to mix up the amount of color that I, I feel like I want represented in the piece. And usually I do this off camera. But I know I want a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this. JK, I don't want more of that. I want more of this. this, this, um, for my actual color, any dark color, I want less. So I always mix up a smaller quantity. I feel like if you mix up more than what you're going to need, you're going to feel pressure to use it. And I don't want you guys to feel the pressure. With the kind of marble that I'm going to be doing today, it's very minimal in terms of the colors that aren't sort of white. And in fact, I'm going to be doing two whites. I'm going to be doing an opaque white and then a skim milk type of white. So I'm going to need a little this and a big this. And the oyster. There's a little bit left in my cup, probably less than an ounce, but it's fine. Okay, 
Let's start with the interference blue. So interference interference blue is um, a color that some people get mixed up with um, a chameleon, but it's not a chameleon. It's just a pigment that shines blue under certain light. Like where a reflection would hit it, it's going to present as blue. I don't want this to be opaque. I just want it to have a blue sheen. So I used not that much, but you can see where it kind of has splatted out that blue sheen that's in it. Blue. I think interferences are really good to add a pop of something that's like, wait, what was that? Did I, did I just see that? So I can still see all the way through my resin down to the stir stick, but where the light hits it, it's shining blue. If I were to add too much of the interference blue, it would turn into a cloudy milky white and the blue wouldn't be as awesome. Hello, D, Chrissy, JJ, Paula, Shannon, Julie. Thank you guys for showing up with me today. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'm always happy to help. All right, I'm gonna put that aside. This is Milky Way or Shooting Star. It looks like wet coffee grounds a little bit, and it looks like it's gonna stay a chunky consistency in the resin, but it's not, I promise you. So just like with the interference blue, we're not gonna use that much because if you use too much, it'll make it opaque, and I really want to not have it be opaque. Stone coat, what's up? I was just telling everybody I had someone call me asking questions on what they should use for a color palette to match a picture of their countertops that they sent me. And um, I'm doing a color test for them because I love to do color matching for people. Big Mitch, love to see you guys. Okay. And thanks for using our colors the other day on your last live. So I'm going to use minute amount of this top cell white in my big cup. Slightly more than minute, this much of minute. And I'm doing that because I want this to be a translucent or a see-through Kind of, I'm trying for frosted or like skim milk. So I want to be able to see the stick through the resin, but still have that haze. And then I'm going to mix up just a little bit for my, um, opaque white. Sorry, I get lost in words sometimes. So I'm gonna use essentially the same amount of pigment, but in this little cup, and because I want it to be opaque. And opaque is when you cannot see through your color to whatever's behind it. So when we're doing a test to see if this is opaque, I'm just gonna hold up my stir stick and see if I can see the brown, which you cannot, so we have an opaque color. Next color I'm going to mix up is called silver gray. It's kind of a kind of blue, bluish taupe, if that makes sense. And I want this to be opaque, but we're not going to use that much of it, so we put it in one of the smaller cups. Now this doesn't look like it would be that dark of a shade, but trust me, once it's in the piece, it's very noticeable when you have um, basically all whites and creams, and then you drop this in, it's very noticeable. So the next color I'm going to do is Interference Oyster Pearl. And I really like this color because it's a very satin pearl. I mean, it's oyster pearl satin. So 
that makes sense. I always forget when I'm mixing a powder not to just go ham and start mixing it really fast right away because then you get that puff of mica in your face, which is one reason why I really, really love pastes. There's many reasons. That's just one of them. So this is super beautiful pearly oyster. You can make it more opaque by adding more pigment, but I'm not going full opaque. I like to have translucence in my um, colors, in my pieces, because it shows more depth. And more depth is how you get realistic finishes. Are you ready to do a river table class via Zoom remotely in your own shop following along with me or fly out to Oregon Tech or Texas for an in-person river table class? I, personally, I'm doing in-person. Okay, and this is the color that I feel like a little bit is uh, represented in the person. I think Michael called me today. And I think this is, it's a little bit more green than what his um, cabinets are. But we're not going to use that much of it. I'm just using it as a deep pop of color. It's like a moody, dark teal. I think Mitch would really like this color. You can kind of see it on this edge here. Love it. Hey, Evelyn. Okay. Let's get started. So here lately, I've been really big into underpainting with my pigments. And so what I'm gonna do is underpaint a little bit with um, some of these colors. But I've forgotten to lift my cradle board. There. Okay, so first I'm gonna just Kind of rough, draw in some lines. And then I'm gonna do some white as well. I'm using the opaque white. This is one of those processes where you just have to trust, trust the process. So now I'm going to use some Milky Way if you are used to diamond dust from Stone Coat, it's similar. And I'm gonna do some of the interference blue. And some of my pearl. I'm going over the subtle lines that I already put in. And what I'm trying to do ultimately is create a background painting for the dirty pour or exotic pour lines that I'm going to put in in just a second. So I'm just going to skim my hand over the piece and just make sure that there's no um, dry areas left. And because I use translucence and transparency, you can see the um, underpainting that we did with the resin. For me, underpainting is one of the best ways to create depth and shadow and shading without, I guess, kind of going too far with it, because sometimes you can definitely take color too far, especially if you're doing a marble piece. It's very easy to add too much of a color. And unfortunately, when you do that, it's very hard to take that back. So I'm not trying to blend everything in that I have down. I'm just covering all of the dry canvas. 
and taking hair out because apparently I'm shedding. Awesome. So we have very thin skim coat down. You guys can't see the interference right now, but you will be able to see when when I get everything down, I'll give you guys a close up. Chrissy, you want to start doing countertops? You've been doing practice boards, but you're really wondering what would be to start out charging. Honestly, it really depends on your area, your market, and um, what kind of finish that they're looking for. Because if I were to do a solid color, it would cost less than doing, whoop, sorry y'all, cost less than doing a whole bunch of um, design elements like a marble like this. So just be cautious of that. So I'm going to create a dirty pour or an exotic pour. I'm putting my translucent white in and I'm going to just jump in there with this dark and stormy from Color Passion. I'm just giving a swizzle, right? Just a swizzle. Uh, we're going to call that a unit of measure. When you're doing a dirty pour or an exotic pour, it's really important to get your colors into your cup and then back out as quickly as possible because the longer they have in here to kind of hang out and talk to each other, uh, the more you're going to get kind of a sporadic or crazy um, pattern swizzle of the silver gray and that's all of the kind of darker colors that I'm going to add and now I'm just layering everything else that I've got the Milky Way the satin oyster the translucent white the opaque white did I say interference blue because that's in there Just layering them all. Then once you have everything layered, I, I give just a good swirl for good measure. And that's just so that when you first pour it out, it's not just the boring top color that you put in. I didn't mix it, I swirled it. So different. So now I'm gonna lay this dirty pour out in whatever fashion I feel like I want to go. Currently it looks like this. This is going to be so nice. Since I have already a layer of resin down before I did my dirty or exotic pours. My pour, my dirty pour and my underpainting are just going to start to level out on their own. If I were to have done that, the dirty pour or exotic pour on a dry surface or one that just doesn't have any resin, uh, it just, it wouldn't level like I want it to. It would start to roll over itself as it's trying to get out of, um, being such a high pour because generally resin's gonna pour out at like a quarter inch but it's going to try to self-level at an eighth inch so if you help it do that you're gonna waste less product in my opinion all right now i'm going to just add lines of the rest of the resin that i have so I'm adding some of the translucent white in the areas where I feel like I need to brighten it. I probably won't add any um, words are hard. Any of the silver gray or the dark and stormy, but I might. You never know. And everybody has their own way of doing marble, their own way of doing resin. 
Mitch is a very talented resin artist with stone coat. Very blessed to have so many talented friends around me. I think it's important to have a bunch of talented people around you. Because if you're the most talented person in the room, you need to switch rooms. That's just my opinion. Nice line of this interference blue is gonna look great. See that interference blue shine in? The only thing is where I wanna put it initially was right through here, but you don't wanna have something that's too different run right through the center of your piece. So this is the most bold dirty pour. It was the first pour out, I think, but it's off center. If that would have come out right here, I would have tilted it to shift where um, the most uh, obvious vein is. Vein, dirty pour, dotted pour. You know what I mean. Lots of color, simple design. I love it. I think it's important to have simple, elegant designs at least as an option for your clients. I say that, but I always have an element of sparkle in my pieces, whether they're um, a countertop or an art piece. I'm trying to decide if I wanna add some lines of the gray. You can see the gray kind of peeking through in some areas, some slashes of the dark and stormy coming through. What do you guys think? Should I add more of the silver gray? While we're deciding, I'm gonna add some lines of the opaque white. I like having stark opaque white lines. And because I'm using a heavy white and I use so many translucents, what's going to happen is this white is going to sink through my translucent colors. And once I tilt it, it's going to create like a shifted shadow. It's just a super easy way to create depth, which I'm all about easy ways of creating depth. I'm just following along some of the dirty pour lines to do this. Walk away. All right. I always trust y'all's judgment. All right. I'm going to hit with some heat. We're going to tilt it. Then if you guys let me, I'm going to add some floating silver, which I think is going to add a lot of pizzazz to the piece, in my opinion. So I'm just trying to pop the bubbles. I'm not trying to create movement, so that's why I'm using a chef's torch and not a big, huge one or a something, what's the word? Heat gun. Also, when I picked that up, I dropped a couple of bits of trash. So I'm gonna try to pick them up. If not, I'm just going to tap them and push them down into the resin. Sometimes it happens that things fall in your piece. And sometimes you can't get them out. Maybe you don't have tweezers, I don't have one handy, but you can just push them into your resin. Just a little pro tip, because if it's under some of your opaque colors, you're not gonna see it. And if it's under your translucent colors, it's just gonna create more depth. With resin, you just have to go with the flow. You have to roll with the punches, 
and just know that it's okay. All right, so I'm just gonna put it on a slight tilt. Um, if you're doing a countertop and you're doing a pour in place, this may not always be possible, but the bright side of that is if you're doing a pour in place, odds are it's not perfectly level anyway, so inherently you're just gonna, you're gonna get a shift anyways. Tilting is one of my favorite ways to make all of the lines I put down look not so sporadic and kind of just make it a little bit more cohesive. Oh my goodness, these colors are rolling over themselves and they look so great. Let me take my gloves off and I'll give you um, a better view. So that looks like a straight up shadow, but it's just that opaque white rolling over some of that gray. It looks like it straight up has a shadow. See how it sank and then stretched as I tilted it this way? That's the oyster. That's that, that color right there in the light. Then this is Milky Way. This is a dry spot. Don't mind that. And so all of these ribbons and veins are lapping over each other. And that to me, not being a, like in masonry or any of the awesome things that like Mitch is into. I don't know all the things, but I do know, I know color and what I think looks good. That's not always accurate, but in my head it looks good. Yeah, the stormy colors are underneath and they're popping through in different areas in a so random pattern, as my RK3 friends like to say. So I'm taking some of my floating silver and I'm pouring it out into the back of a paper cup. And I'm doing this specifically because I need the propellant to work its way out. So you can see that bright yellow haze around it right now. That's propellant. That's what makes um, an aerosol, like a spray paint, not dry in the can. So as you spray it, the propellant will evaporate and it just leaves your paint behind. But if you don't work out the propellant, then you're not gonna have that much control over your line. The propellant is going to keep your, your floating silver or your floating gold or whatever the color may be, it's gonna keep it fluid. And it's gonna keep it fluid until it dries on your surface. And as it dries, it's gonna crack. So as it blooms, it's gonna crack and it's not gonna be your favorite thing. But maybe it is your favorite thing, who knows? And if it is, I love that for you. But I wanna be able to control the thickness of the veins that I put in this piece. So I'm gonna soak out as much of the propellant as I can without it fully drying up. And so I always do a roadside test to see if it's gonna bloom. And if it doesn't, then I move on to the piece. And if it does, then I just stir this around a little bit more. Also, the reason why I'm in the back of the cup instead of the inside of this little Dixie cup is because most Dixie cups are wax, wax lined so that your mouthwash or whatever you're putting in these cups doesn't soak into the paper. But I want the propellant to soak into the paper, but they don't coat the bottom of these cups. So bottom of the cup. All right, that bloomed a little bit. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more of this. And as I stir it, you can see where the silver splits 
part here, that's propellant. And it'll soak down all the way down this cup if I let it go. Clara, how are you doing? All right, we're gonna go on with it. You ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm not ready. I don't know where I'm doing this. Okay, wait, okay. Let's start on the side. I like to start kind of in an inconspicuous area and then if I don't like it, I can just scrape it off and start over. So this is also going to be giving me kind of the dark, the dark accent in my eye, I think I was looking for when I was asking if I should add more of the um, silver gray. And this floating silver, it's gonna, it's, it literally just floats on the surface. This should be the last thing you do after you have heated your resin, done all your tilting and manipulating, because this isn't going to, um, it's not gonna do anything pretty if you try to manipulate it after it dries on your surface. It's just gonna crack and it's not gonna look fun. Hope you're feeling okay today, Clara. Wait till you see what this floating silver looks like. You guys are gonna absolutely love it. If you guys do decide to use this floating anything that I have on my website, then just be sure um, if you, if you're going to sand to do a flood coat, just try to avoid the areas that have this floating silver on it because it's, um, it's surface. And so if you try to sand it, it's going to sand right off. So just be advised. I feel like I don't want to go right through the center, but it needs something, so I'm just going to just add a something. I'm good with it. So, let me take you guys down and see what you think. Floating silver, floating silver. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? I think that floating silver adds just a touch of something just magical, in my opinion. I love it. What do you guys think? We should add anything. Take away anything. Also keep in mind that this is going to change and shift a little bit as it's curing and self-leveling. It's going to do more things. So never really, unless you're really good about keeping your everything level and pour it out at an eighth inch, it's going to move. It's going to change. It's going to do something and can't really control it. So you just have to look forward to like a nice surprise, essentially, once it's um, done. Gail, thank you so much.
That's so sweet of you. Anytime you guys tip us for your channel, it means so much to us. I can't even tell you. It means the world. Oh, thank you, Lori. I think it's super subtle. I think it'll go good in Michael's space. I am going to recommend him to add a little bit more blue to the Dark and Stormy because it's giving a little bit more green um, when it's combined with all of these light colors. So, so yeah, I think, I think we're good. Do you guys have any questions, comments, concerns? This was yesterday, if you guys want to go back and watch. I like subdued look too. I think I have it off kilter. No. Let me. Oh, I'm experimenting with something. I want to get y'all's idea thoughts on. Let me just take this to the dust free zone real quick. Okay, so the thing I need your guys' thoughts on, I did this piece the other day on a live, and then I decided I wanted to try to make black bubbles. My sea foam, I tried to dye it black. Um, didn't really work like I wanted it to, but it doesn't look horrible either. It looks a little bit more Halloween-y than... I imagined it would in my head. They all of my bubbles would look like these, but I think I just layered them on too thick because it's quite a pile. But I wanted them to look like this. A lot of people like adding black lace to pieces, so I think this is going to be a good thing to do. I just need to remember to lay them down thinner. So I need to know if this looks just too weird. Don't pay attention to the mound. Pay attention to my these. These edgy bubbles that you can see all the way through. These. So essentially it'll look like this, but be this. And these. So I'm going to do a video on, sorry for all the movement, I'm going to do a video on my these. Maybe not black because you can't really get to black with Mod Podge, but I bet I could do a nice dark purple. That would make sense. I wanted them all to look like these. Oh, well. All right, you guys. I hope you have an amazing Tuesday. Thank you so much for the contribution and for coming in and watching what I'm doing today. I will do a video on the these. And I'm so glad you guys speak my kind of English about the these. What are you doing? You just letting me pet your tum tum? Um, if you are interested in the colors that I used today, they are Color Passion, Dark and Stormy, Resin Art, Interference Blue, Resin Art, Shooting Star or Milky Way, Silver Gray by Just Resin, Interference Oyster from Resin Art, and Top Cell White from Color Passion. And there's my big boy. Who told you to be so cute? I'm just going to go back to sleep. Cool. All right, you guys. I hope you have a stupendous rest of your day. I'll see you here tomorrow at 
um, 6 Central. And I hope you have an awesome day. Be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. I'm always a member, she does tests. Yeah, we do the test so you don't have to. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. bye. We said bye.